procrastination. Things haven't been going well for me over the past couple of weeks or so. Um, so I just want to discuss it with you because, well, quite frankly, the, there's things that have been getting on top of me and I've been procrastinating. My aim was to get this website up and running and to allow um, you to buy some merch should you want to buy some and uh, it hasn't quite worked out and, and I wanted it ready for Christmas time so I wanted you know by mid-November latest um, the, the website would have been up and running um, but it wasn't and it stressed it started stressing me out and it was getting on top of me procrastination now in the good book of the Collings English Dictionary look how thick that is I didn't realize there were so many words in the English language I didn't procrastination contour lines no no what they are though electro positive no I just uh, do you know when you don't you don't do this anymore do you you just don't do it anymore prim and proper problematic well that's me oh I missed it pro procreate Procrastinate, here we go. What does it say? It says, until later, delay to postpone until tomorrow. I postponed and postponed and postponed until months later because I was getting stuck on the old website. And you know when you procrastinate, there's I have lots of jobs and there's a timeline, whatever that timeline is, and there's you know various deadlines perhaps. And then there's lots of little jobs. Uh, and then do I do, this is a poor, poor example. Do I do lots of little jobs daily? In which case it would take me this long to get anything done. Or do I do one job and then get it done? And then another job and get it done? And then another job and get it done. Uh, and that leads to, I think, happiness of sorts. It, it kind of leads to, you can see a result quicker, even though you're only dealing with one job at a time. Now, last week, I said to you, I'm still struggling with my website. Oh, 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 oh. And um, the power of the tube is a fellow called Mark. He said, uh, email this fella. He's from the US. He might be able to help you out. I said, oh, okay. So I, I, um, I emailed Brett. And you know what? Within half an hour, because the Zoom call was 40 minutes, there's a bit of 10 minute faff time. You just say, oh, tick that, mate, tick that, see that, get rid of that, delete that. Um, should work. Oh, and it did. Oh, so my um, website's up and running. Now, I haven't... Well, there's Friendly Forces out in Australia. He's ordered something because I wanted that to be checked out. I wanted to make sure the process worked. I wanted to make sure that if you were ordering something, that the process would be easy. Because my demographic is my age and above. There's some younger, but generally speaking, you know, my 50 up. And so those people that wanted to order, I wanted to have a, a pleasant experience, something that's relatively easy. I work out my process. I got the delivery people, so the people that make the garments. I've got them to on side because they're going to post and all, all of that little things. It's the last 20% that takes the 80% more time. Proto's Law, which, um, spot on. Thanks very much, Mark, for putting me in touch with Brett. Thanks very much, Brett, for your knowledge. Because without that, without that half an hour of interaction, I would be procrastinating because I just didn't know what to do. I will let you know on the YouTube when you can start ordering if you wanted to buy some merch. Oh, another thing, I've done my back in. So content has been lame. Although I thought it was quite good. Someone commented, oh, your uh, matchmaker's um, packet was empty, you like your content. Well, cheers, mate. 
lots of debris in the water at the moment. And that's generally, you know, things like that aren't too bad. Because there are only twigs and things. But if it's bigger, it can create a bit of a drama for you. Hello, mate. There's a um, bit of a story in front of me. Uh, they clunked a log on the propeller. Ooh. Fortunately, we don't think it's done an awful lot of damage to their boat, but the noise as, as the propeller spins, different. I have suffered from back issues for well, as long as I can remember, actually. And that's one of those things, you know, when you're in the soldiering business, um, carrying an awful lot of weight and standing around for long periods of time. Um, not good for your knees, not good for your back, not good for your hips. Um, and I suffer with my back quite a lot. And it, it comes in fits and starts, not quite debilitating, but it has been extremely painful. So it's about combating that. It's about understanding how your body works and, and how to mitigate all those things. Fall. We felt so alive, and girl, we were thriving on kisses and sunshine and mischief. Yeah, we had one of those things. Uh, we just had one of those things. Ooh. I guess I've had some things to figure out. But now that I'm done, I'm full of doubt. Doing some wood chopping, and uh, well, Pat's done the high on die thingy, and my job is to chop. Quite like it. Yeah, was it too easy for you? You used to say that you'd always be mine, but you seem to be doing just fine. Now I think about you. I just can't seem to stop thinking about you. Take me back to the, take me back to those easy There's the Globe Inn, it's a pub and dining facility, it's quite good actually, it's in there some time ago, uh, very nice and as you've noticed, it's busy, so I think all these boats are here for Christmas time and there's a couple of weeks for Christmas so, you know, good for them, parking up early, getting a nice spot, um, I'm moving with a wide beamer, I believe, Pat and Karen, nice couple and uh, oh, I've had to slow down as they go through the bridges because Pat needs to line himself up properly. Um, if you are buying a wide beam, I think wide beams have an absolute advantage. Having been on their boat, you know, if someone was to say, hey Chris, fancy living, you know, if I, if I agree, because it's a two-way thing, isn't it? Um, the wide beam, is certainly more like a home than a narrowboat. You narrowboaters will be saying, oh, you can live on a narrowboat, there's two of us. Yes, I get it, I get it. But if, if, for example, there's lots of baggage, and I don't mean emotional baggage, I mean, I mean stuff that people have, then you can have more stuff on a wide beam than you can on a narrowboat. Now, I had that chat with uh, Paul and Veronica, and I've said to them, I use everything on my boat. I kind of do, but then I kind of could get rid of some and put some into storage. Uh, disadvantage is 
Um, well, you're watching Pat and Karen on the on the bow cam, and the amount of um, concentration Pat does is far greater than mine. They've got to concentrate the whole time, and it's a lot slower moving, and it's a lot more stressful moving. Let's watch a little bit of bow cam. I could say we're watching some scenery, but we're watching Pat's backside. Not not a pretty sight, I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> Not for me anyway. <laughs> oh, what do I think about when I'm on these journeys? I just, I just don't know. But there's more to come because I want to talk to you about the reasons why I am um, putting my name forward for a CRT council spot thing. Here's Pat, he slows down, lines himself up for the bridge, and you notice there's not a lot of room width-wise, and sometimes height-wise, you can't have an awful lot on the top of his roof. Not much room at all, look. Another disadvantage of a wide beam, they do squeeze through, breathe in. When you liberate me, feels like I am going crazy. So full of love when you're dancing on me. I'm Conversely, no dramas. Advantages of a Nara. So full of Tell it's winter, can't you? Grey skies, no leaves, dull, dreary. I feel so alone And quite chilly. Time to give it up. Give me something more. Show me what you got. I need some. tell you this temperatures dropped and all my coats are inside the boat admin that's all I'm gonna say is admin that is criminal offense as uh, in the trade that I would have been in never mind I've got a I've got a coat with it here we have a wiggly bit of a canal with the trains just over there look Loads of boats, but it's a wiggly bit of canal. Anyway, um, let's discuss why I want to be a CRT council member type thing. Now, is there a hidden agenda? Yes, there is, is, is the answer. So what is it then, Chris? Well, I'll tell you. I want to benefit, the, well, initially this Canal and River Trust, and also all the boaters, whether you're a continuous cruiser or not. Um, but, but by and large, continuous cruisers. And the reason for that is because, well, I've been traveling with some people just recently and they received a, you have overstayed your welcome in this parish. But I never got a said email. I don't know why I never got a said email because we've kind of been staying in and around the same area. But there was one occasion when um, this couple had um, moved about a mile from where they were. But I believe they might have been in the same parish in that mile journey. Now, the, 
I know CRT have got various different demarcation lines, different parishes which they measure you against as to how, how much you've moved. So for example, you can be one, I don't know, uh, uh, one far edge of the parish and then move 50 metres and you're the close edge of the next parish but uh, that's classed as a move. Whereas this boat had moved a mile and they had overstayed their welcome because they were in the same parish. Yes, if you travelled every two weeks and you travelled a mile, you'll be doing the 26 miles of which you, which you only have to drive 20. And that mile is further than some people travel um, through Burkhamsted, for example. Me, for one. I mean, I've stayed in Burkhamsted at least a month because I've travelled through different parishes in Burkhamsted. So I kind of think that the rules need to be interrogated and I understand it's a computer generated email and because it's stayed within that demarcation line of that parish then it automatically generates a, a an email. And I would like CRT to revisit the rules for continuous cruisers, mainly because if you were to ask 10 people what the rules are, you'll have 10 different answers. And also the continuous cruiser segment of uh, the boating community, well, they're paying more and I think it's only fair that we should ask CRT to do more due diligence in their homework. And it's sometimes it's about doing the right thing instead of doing the correct thing as well. Here's a little story. When I was um, the warrant officer at Cranwell, which is equivalent to the Academy Sergeant Major Sandhurst, we had a Battle of Britain parade and I phoned up, or I wrote an email to the Commandant of the Central Flying School, and I said to him, my rehearsals for Battle of Britain are on whatever date it was and time. I, um, it would be nice to see your colour party attend for rehearsals. He wrote an email back saying, uh, we're not attending. I replied, the Battle of Britain is something that the Royal Air Force celebrates every year. Those people who fought in the Battle of Britain gave a little bit more than a couple of hours of their time. I think you, being Central Flying School, it should be a privilege to give, to show your colour and to give your support. The thing I did wrong was I also emailed his boss, who's a one star. And then I was called into my group captain's office and the group captain said to me, you've overstepped the mark. I said, no, I haven't, sir. I said, let me put it this way. I may have done something incorrect, i.e copying in his one star but also it was the right thing to do and if you sack me which you're capable of doing and it ended up on the front page of the press would I be proud the answer is yes so therefore I made the right decision may not have been the correct way of doing it I don't have an issue with telling truth to power and I do measure myself on that test of if it ended up on the front page of the press, would I be proud? If the answer is yes, I'd do it anyway. I don't need nothing to extreme so come on. Now I don't think I've ever done locks so quick. I mean there are times that I generally speaking like to go through locks nice and slowly. Take my time. This couple. I mean I mean wow. I thought Dan, Sweary Dan, was quite good at entering locks, but this fella, different league, absolutely smashes through the locks. Him and his wife, they don't have to go through them quick, really quick. Fella getting rid of his rubbish there, look. Full steam ahead. There he is, look, off he goes. Lot of a sedate pace for me. And stopped at this water point at three locks. Do you know it's a very good water point? If ever you're passing three locks and need some water, it won't take you long. Won't take you long at all.
think Pat does a great job, and all those wide beamers. I haven't, I haven't travelled with a wide beamer ever, and knowing what they have to do to go through the bridges is um, is quite impressive, actually. Particularly the wide wide beamers, you know, the twelve and a half foot wideers. There's not a lot of room. And particularly if the foliage was overgrown on one side, the off towpath side, um, that could scratch the whole paintwork of the boat. I don't think it's unreasonable to think that CRT could keep the, the foliage down um, as wide beams are passing under bridges. I mean, you would complain, wouldn't you, if you were driving down the country lane in the UK, and those country lanes are narrow enough as it is, and the farmers had allowed their bushes, those hedgerows, to overgrow by a number of feet, three, four feet. Um, I think you would complain because the sides of your paintwork on your car get all scratched. I don't think it's any different for boats. And I struggle at times to go under some of those bridges with the foliage. And, you know, I, I look after this boat. A lot of boaters look after their boats. I haven't got a problem telling the ground truth because I think no one gets out of bed wanting to be crap. And CRT have a very difficult job and I am pro CRT. The principal reason I want to join um, this, this uh, council to inform. Uh, you can only inform if you're in a place to inform and hopefully that information will then um, resonate uh, with those people that make the decisions and uh, life could be better. You only need to get the basics right and improve by 1%. I said that on a recent meeting. But I feel that sometimes CRT aren't getting the basics right and that there's some real quick wins they could do with the boating community, particularly those continuous cruisers um, who continuously cruise what am i doing next week well it's christmas week next week well i'm going up that way to meet amanda for christmas time uh spend a few hours with her maybe have a chat maybe some of it on camera and um uh, and then after that punching through because i need to get through stoke Bruin before um the winter stoppages kick in at stoke Bruin. um so lots of traveling to do over the next couple of weeks um so thanks for watching thanks for liking thanks for subscribing those who that have and if you haven't subscribed give it a go it does it is free it does help me out it does keep me interested and um i'll see you next week christmas